Today I will uh, shortly tell you about uh, the work and the targets of our team, uh, especially related to lignin under the title of Develop Development Steps in Commercialization of Organosol Lignin. So uh, as you all probably know, Fortum is an energy company uh, offering mainly solutions uh, in uh, uh, electricity, heating and cooling, but is also active uh, in circular economy, in waste management, and also in uh, recycling. So, uh, but kind of climate change, need for carbonization and resource efficiency are currently changing the energy sector in a profound way. And, and we actually believe that uh, uh, on the one hand, there will be in future an abundance of energy and, and then a scarcity of the materials. And, and then uh, hence there needs to be a, a focused uh, use for biomass. So we need to transfer the usage of biomass from energy to higher value use. And in this, our Bio2X program, uh, we are uh, transforming biomass into high-value products uh, that can be used to replace the current unsustainable and fossil-based uh, materials and chemicals. The key in our concept is to uh, really fractionate and separate biomass into its uh, three main components, cellulose, hemicellulose and lignin, and then use all of these components for high-value applications. So uh, currently, uh, we are concentrating in our concept uh, to uh, agro-residues as uh, raw materials uh, like wheat straw and uh, rice straw in our organosol fractionation technology uh, where we uh, fractionate and separate our three main products. Oops. Uh, cellulose, uh, hemicellulose and uh, lignin. Uh, for cellulose, currently the main R&D focus areas are uh, fiber and specialty uh, cellulose products, including MFC and MCC. Uh, we are also studying the use of uh, pulp for uh, textiles and biocomposites. Uh, then with hemicellulose, our main focus area is uh, in furfural con uh, conversion in addition to acetic acid, but we are also evaluating other chemical intermediates uh, from uh, hemicellulose. And with lignin, we can say that the main focus are R&D areas at this point are thermosetting resins, thermoplastics, uh, dispersants and adhesives. So uh, together with our fractionation partner, Kempolis, and an Indian oil company, Numaliga Refinery Limited, NRL, we are currently building our first biorefinery in uh, India, Assam. There the main product will, will be bioethanol in addition to acetic acid and furfural. Uh, here the lignin is used as biocoal uh, for energy uh, purposes. Uh, and here uh, the startup of this plant will be next year and, and there the raw material will be ba bamboo which will be used 300 kilotons annually. Um, in addition of, of this uh, biorefinery aspect and, and bringing business to us, so there are a clear impacts uh, in addition to climate impacts, uh, bringing incomes to the uh, local community and welfare for the families and also, of course, less imported oil to India. And if we now move on to our lignin, so our organosol lignin is unique in uh, many ways. So in addition of being a really sustainable what comes to feed stock being an agricultural residue and meaning that there is really a minim minimal environmental burden and on also no de deforestation and no competition with food uh, production. It has a uh, pretty interesting and, and unique uh, characteristic and properties as well. Uh, it has a high purity and, and very uh, low ash content. It has also a pretty low molecular weight, which is uh, beneficial in many industrial applications. 
It is also free from this uh, unpleasant smell. We all know that uh, is typical for some of the lignin, and that feature can be uh, really crucial in, in some applications, like, for example, thermoplastics. Uh, and then uh, uh, we have also the possibility uh, to adjust some of the lignin pro uh, properties during the processing, like uh, adjusting the pH of the lignin or the particle size to some extent, of course, uh, during the processing, which, which can be uh, critical in some of the uh, application formulations that we are aiming. So uh, here I, I wanted to illustrate some of our lignin R&D focus areas and also uh, roughly an understanding uh, and our estimation for their time to market. Having now worked for over uh, 10 years with lignin, I can really say that there is a lot going on at the moment uh, with lignin. Uh, I, can, uh, I think that kind of previously it was many times a market push rather than a market pull when, when we were talking about lignin, but now it feels that companies are really taking uh, the sustainability aspects more seriously and they are also setting goals for themselves uh, which forces them to look for new alternatives, sustainable raw materials. And, and this, of course, opens up new, new doors to lignin as well, which is really uh, super, I would say. So uh, with lignin uh, product development, we have a, a, a many collaborations ongoing with um, many kind of partners, big companies, startups, technology providers, uh, research organizations and, and also universities. And since we are a pretty small team, roughly 30 persons, we heavily need to prioritize our doings in this uh, development field. So we have uh, divided roughly our R&D activities to short-term, mid-term and, and long-term goals. Uh, and of course, uh, most of our efforts will go to short term, but also uh, mid term goals at this point. In Lingnin, I could say that in short term and mid term, uh, uh, the activities with Lingnin develop, uh, product development includes, for example, the development of Lingnin phenol formaldehyde resins where uh, lignin replaces phenol. So probably many of you know that this is one of uh, the already existing products in the markets. But of course, there is always a room for some improvement, like increasing the lignin uh, content of the final formulation, or, or for example, uh, uh, bringing new application areas uh, and developing those for LPF resins as well. We are also very interested in lignin thermoplastics uh, so that lignin has a crucial role in the final matrix, not only being a filler. And uh, here we especially see the advantage of our lignin compared to many other technical lignins that exist currently. And this is definitely the smell topic that's, that can be crucial uh, when uh, working in high temperatures. Here I can mention one of our collaboration projects called Lignin Reserve, uh, coordinated by Obu Academy. And, and there the aim is to uh, develop new lignin derivatives and lignin copolymers for applications like membranes, coatings, packaging, uh, packaging and thermoplastic. We also work with lignin dispersants, uh, and here I can mention, for example, uh, the EU Lignox project uh, coordinated by VTT that just actually ended, but is definitely a very uh, promising new approach for lignin. Uh, here the aim was to further develop an alkali oxidation process for lignin, enabling its use as concrete plasticizer, but also are dispersant for other end uses as well. Uh, we are also working with uh, lignin adhesives and foams. Uh, we have, for example, two consortium projects uh, coordinated by Michigan State University. In a CRIBE 1 project, uh, we are developing uh, uh, polyurethane 
adhesives, and LPF uh, resins uh, for engineered wood products and CLC. And this other uh, Scribe 2 project is focusing uh, on uh, bringing lignin to automotive industry in the form of le flexible polyurethane foams. And here, uh, with carboni carbonized lignin, I would say that we have uh, some activities ongoing. Um, uh, also, for example, with Aalto, and, and here I think that uh, our basic idea is to uh, really go to high-value products uh, with uh, car carbonized lignin, like uh, energy storage applications and so. And then if we are talking about lignin for hygiene products, uh, so here we can talk, well, talk for example, uh, about the use uh, of lignin in cosmetics and personal care in a, a products that contains, for example, UV blockers or antioxidants. And, and I think that here is, it's especially important uh, to have a certain size and shape and morphology of the particle. And I'm really glad to see that there is really a lot going on, as we have heard today in this field, to really uh, form um, nice uh, spherical, stable, colloidal particles that can be further used for really high-value applications. In longer term, I really hope to see that we can uh, produce small molecules and aromatic building blocks from lignin enabling their use, for example, as precursors for industrial needs. Today, I think that kind of uh, the uh, production and recovery of small molecules and aromatics in both technically and economically feasible way is not yet there, but in this field definitely there is also a lot going on. Here I can mention one of our uh, existing consortium projects called Symbio Pro, coordinated also by VTT, where the approach is to use uh, synthetic biology to enable the micro microbes to affect the C5 sugars and lignin uh, to form uh, chemicals and further uh, produce acrylic acid and adipic acid out of those uh, precursors. And finally, uh, I have illustrated here a, show, uh, a, a road map uh, which describes pretty well our steps in development and finally commercialization of our organosol lignin. So uh, this you can, here you can also see the time frame of, of such, a, such a work. So uh, the Bio2x team was uh, established in 2015 and in 2016 uh, the team produced their first lignin samples. And uh, back then, the team evaluated uh, several fractionation technologies and, and several raw materials as well. Then in 2019, uh, we decided to focus on organosol technology and uh, then uh, a wheat straw as our main uh, raw material and, and straw mainly. So from, uh, from from, them we ha from then, we have been producing constantly uh, lignin batches uh, in our fractionation partner site uh, in, at Kempolis Oulu site in the scale of, of tens to hundreds of kilos annually. And actually, this year, uh, the pilot is being upscaled, and, and there is also new equi equipment so uh, that they will enable even larger amount production of lignin to the growing needs of our customers and, and partners. And finally, uh, the startup of the full-scale operation will be in 2027, when we expect our first straw biorefinery be, to be uh, in operation and running, and there the aim is to produce 50 kilotons of lignin annually. So this was the story of the development and commercialization of our lignin. And, and what I really want to say that commercialization of lignin cannot be done alone. Uh, alone. And here we, of course, need to have a, a very good partnerships, which we already have. 
but uh, just to let you know that we are keeping our eyes open all the time and looking for new interesting approaches and partnerships. So if you feel that you have something for us to discuss, so please contact me and thank you for your attention. Thank you, Hanne. I think this was a very good uh, end of the LinkedIn session to see like uh, that you actually are interested in, in making the products. Uh, maybe a question you will not be want to answer, but if you would have uh, one um, take home message for us scientists, what, what do we need to solve? What is the most important <laughs> thing? <laughs> Very easy one. <laughs> Well, what I have just recently myself realized, what you all actually said that, and, and what has been said so many times before in the past, but, but is that lignin is not simply a lignin. So, uh, like, we have so heterogeneous material, and we can, of course, try to make it uh, homogeneous, and in the longer run, maybe these aromatic building blocks can help in that but at least meanwhile, uh, instead of trying to put all the lignin to the same applications, we should also be uh, kind of thinking that which lignins could be suitable for which applications and then try to develop in those applications in that perspective. And I also think that this making a colloidal particles is one approach, kind of homogenizing the lignin you have for certain application. So not thinking that all the doors are open and, and not trying to, for example, with us compete with craft lignin in all the possible applications, but try to focus on those that we see really relevant for our lignin. <laughs>